Hello, and welcome to Stiver's Homestead. I'm Zach, and today we're going to introduce you to every animal, animal we have, their purpose of being here, and why they are so important to our farm. Might surprise you on some of the reasons. So almost in every video, you all get to see our little intro that we create every time we do chores, uh, going to feeding and milking all the different animals we have. But it's been a while since we've actually introduced them to you and why they're here. It's very important to understand why your animal is on your farm. You don't wanna just be buying animals to buy animals. They all have to have some form of a purpose for you to be able to feel good in feeding them because it costs to have that animal there. And if they're not producing something back to you, it's ultimately a waste. Now, remember, joy is also a benefit as well, but it has to be real. You're not living on a hobby farm. It might feel like a hobby, but it's just gonna be a blood sucking money tear you down if you don't get a little something out of it. So if you are interested in just going to the hobby side of things, that's perfectly fine, but try to get some kind of benefit out of it. Some kind of full blown joy or product from these animals because ultimately that's their purpose. Most of these farm animals, the livestock that you have, their purpose isn't just to be joyful. It's to, supposed to do something. And if you're putting them on a farm and you're not doing anything with them, you're almost giving them an injustice which really is canceling out the reason that you did a hobby farm in the first place. So make sure to have a reason. Have a reason on any animal that you get. Are you ready to meet ours? Starting off with all of these beautiful little kitty cats. So I'm gonna give you some names right now. A little test later to see if you all remember. That's Meanie, that's Ranger, that's Lizzie, that's Nala, Diane, Jill, Blake, Callie, Jack, and Dusty. So these are all of our kittens that we have currently. And they serve one of the most important jobs on our farm, rat killers. So we got the original three for Raylan on her birthday last year, last September. Um, she had been wanting kittens and the farm needed cats. We needed some cats on the farm to help keep our mouse, our mice, rat and mole and vole problem down. The thing about a farm is you can't really put out baits. You can't put out chemical baits and stuff like that, or even live traps because we have free range chickens. So a lot of our techniques to get down this uh, mice and rat problem was kind of out the door because we couldn't put them on the farm. But cats, barn cats are your number one priority when it comes to keeping that population down. So Raylan gets her joy of having, kit having kittens. We get the benefit of them killing them rats. Next, our free range chickens. There's T Bird over there. He's no Polish. Now, not all these have names. Like, we got a few favorite chickens, but that's, that's about it. Uh, there's a little light Brahma over there. She's big mama. And then we have several that you can see up in here, including guineas, which we'll talk about here in just a second. But the chickens, the free range chickens' purpose is this they assist in keeping our out in the open bug control down. Their second reason is they go over in the cow pasture where the cow manure is and spread that cow manure out for us, help them fertilize the ground and also eating the fly larvae out of cow manure. If you've ever been around cows, you know there's flies everywhere. However, having poultry walk behind that cattle and spreading that manure and eating all the little larvae out, um, that helps keep the population under control. Without that, it's gonna be chaos and you're gonna have flies everywhere. The downfall to having truly free range chickens it's a guessing game on where their eggs are every day. They'll, they'll pick a nesting spot and you'll find it for a while and that'll be it for a week. And then they'll decide they wanna go somewhere else. Right now, ours are going into the woods, which is a bummer because we have nesting boxes everywhere for them that they can get to, but they don't use them. So that's why we have some completely 100% free range and some that aren't. And you may be thinking, Zach, why not just put them in a chicken tractor and walk them behind your cattle and so they can spread that manure and help get that fly patrol down. We will never have lame hens and a chicken tractor. We don't like it. We have all this property. We want them to be able to be free. <laughs> to me, that's just, if you put laying hens in a chicken tractor and that's all they have and you're moving it every day and you feel like that grass is enough grass for them to have, that's nothing better than a chicken home or a chicken house that where there's thousands of chickens in a house because they're never getting out. Um, I do know you could set up some perimeter fence around it, but this works for us. We like having them free and the little nuisance on trying to find their eggs is no big deal. I would rather them have a great life than be tucked inside of some kind of home for their whole life.
Hi, Sophie. She's our favorite right chicken. Isn't that right? Now for up in the barnyard. Guinea, 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 guinea. The guineas. So guineas, you either love them or you hate them. We love them. And so right now you just saw me feed some of the free range animals that we have. They do not need to be fed whatsoever. There is plenty of bugs out here for them to eat summer and winter. We feed to make sure they know this is home. It's very important, it's a very important key that I think some people forget because guineas have a tendency to go do whatever they want, whenever they want. And ours do too, they venture all over the place, but they always come home. And the reason for that is that food is always gonna be better than a bug in their mind and they know it's coming every single morning. That's why they hang around with us. But what's the purpose of guineas? If you're unfamiliar with them and you're wondering on them, definitely, definitely get them. They eat thousands of more bugs than chickens do. They're also much more faster. I always joke, you know that Rocky movie where he has to catch the chicken? He should have had to catch a guinea. That would have been the real test because these bad boys are fast. But guineas, they eat so many ticks and mosquitoes, it's insane. We have a zero tick problem here whatsoever. When we first moved here, none of this outside stuff was here whatsoever. It was not a farm, hadn't been a farm. It was so overgrown, it was insane. The ticks were unbelievable. When we was out here first getting this property done, I would have like 25 ticks on my legs. Wearing jeans, wearing boots, they found a way. It was that bad. Now that we have our 14 guineas running around here and they've been running around for about a year and a half now, zero. There's not a tick problem anywhere on our dogs, on us, and it is amazing. And it's all thanks to the guineas. Guineas are also incredible, incredible creatures when it comes to air patrol predators. So we have a bad hawk problem around here. When those guineas sense a hawk in the area, that's when they get loud. That's the annoying part that everybody has, but they're doing a job. As soon as they get loud, all the chickens either run into the barns or go hide somewhere. And it's because there's a hawk around. So when you thought those guineas were being annoying and barking and being really loud, they were just seeing something that you weren't seeing. And they were trying to warn everybody. Besides air patrol predators, they're also great for small predators. Minks, well, little guinea fight behind us. Minks, uh, possums, raccoons, wild cats, stuff like that. They will keep them away from your chickens and help keep that predator control under control. Come on, Dolly. Come on. Go eat now, Dolly. While he's here, old Bessie, our coony coony pig right here. His purpose is food. Here's the thing, we love all of our animals, whether they're food, milk, or joy. We love Bessie. Where'd he go? He's gone. He knows, he, he knows I'm talking about him being food. We love Bessie, and he lives a great life. But his purpose on our farm is to provide us pork. It's something that we decided at the very beginning, and that is going to be his purpose here. We will not pardon him. There's no reason to have a pig that's just gonna tear up stuff. Um, he is our food, sole purpose. All right, the turkeys. Why in the world would we have turkeys? Turkeys are an interesting animal to raise. Um, besides the fact that they gobble, and that's fun on a farm to have, um, they are also food for us. So we like having meat turkeys available. Now these are heritage turkeys. Um, one thing about turkeys though is they breed, and then the hens go lay their eggs, who knows where. So that purpose kind of got canceled out, and they are strictly food for us. We will do one for Thanksgiving. And we'll also probably uh, do them and then can them ground. We've done that in the past, and we really like that. We really love ground turkey. Sweet old Dolly and little old Zena. They are, as their name says, livestock guardian dogs. They protect our flock from the bigger prey, the coyotes of the world, bear. We have freaking bear here, it's nuts. Uh, snakes, other rats, because they kill rats too. But they are our livestock guardian dogs that protect this entire barnyard flock. And they're also the two best friends that anyone could ever have. 
the in the fence chickens all of them that we have roaming around here they're more of our consistent egg laying production they're the ones that lay it in the coops. We know that we're gonna get it. And that's the ones that we always can guarantee that we're gonna find the eggs up. <laughs> oh, Miss Tilly right here, our miniature horse. She is pure joy. What, for his birthday and forever, he always has wanted a horse. Um, and he finally got him a miniature horse. We thought we would limp in um, to see how it goes with Tilly, which has gone great. Um, she is one that we're able to lead around. Uh, really learned how to take care of a horse with and it's been a great stepping stone for when we do maybe get to a full-size horse But right now she's just pure joy and she is a lot of joy Lastly in the barnyard the sweet little goats. This is Lucy That's Samson our little buckling This is Lola What would you are your Delilah? This is Angel. That's Molly Elsa Butters Shirley Anna Ethel and Buster, oh Buster, he's a weather. Jen always wanted goats, kind of like how White always wanted horses, Jen always wanted goats. We got our goats. We actually love the goats. They're probably our number one production piece on this farm, and that's because of their goat's milk. Our goats are dairy, not meat, and we strictly just use the dairy from them, and the rest of the time they just get to live their life and breed and breed and breed. There was four generations that you saw right there, from mamas all the way down to their, their last kids. Um, that we had this past spring. It's a lot of fun. Goats bring you a lot of joy, but a lot of good production. And goats are very easy to take care of. A lot of people said, if it doesn't hold water, you're not gonna hold a goat. Well, we don't have that issue. Then people said, they're disease ridden all the time. They're gonna die on you left and right. We've never had a goat die. And we do very simple steps to prevent it. Sorry, I just accidentally sprayed myself with a water hose. Phew, everywhere. Goats, all we do is give them an herb called Molly's Herbal. That's a preventative dewormer every monday the second piece we do is give them free choice goat minerals that you can buy anywhere at track supply wherever all the time biggest thing with them is making sure they have something dry in their digestive system so in the summer not too big of an issue your pasture is dry and it's giving them good fiber in the winter you got to have some hay you got to have some free choice hay out there and dry hay because everything's so wet they got to have that in them um, so they can have a good digestive tract. The biggest thing you don't want is diarrhea in a goat But if you do that doesn't mean they're going down It can be fixed very quickly with some probiotics and some hay and then other than that just enjoy them And lastly why the petting zoo why all of these animals together and not in separate pastures? Well besides the fact that it's just enjoyable to watch these relationships build Here's the real reason a lot of other homesteaders. You'll see them. They'll run cattle then they'll run sheep through that, then they'll run chickens through that, then they'll run pigs through all that same pasture. And what that does is confuses all of the bad diseases in the ground, all of those bad worms, all that stuff that's in the ground. It confuses them to where they can't find a good host. Same purpose with the petting zoo. So instead of us tracking them one after another and keeping them separate, they're all always together. So these uh, bad, bad things cannot find a host that is appropriate for them because they're all different. And so that's what keeps this ground and all of our animals healthy and worm levels to a minimum and under control because there's no good host in there because there's so many different animals. And now in the Darko barn, I talk about the cows. This is Daisy. We actively milk her, y'all see that all the time. This is Flossie. And back there's old Hank. And Henry, her bull calf is around but he likes to hide a lot, doesn't he? So Daisy's purpose, pretty simple. She's our daily milk cow that we milk every day and get all kinds of great cow's milk out of. Flossie is hopefully pregnant and will be our selling calf. So we're hoping that she can give us calves that we can sell out and allow her to just be an awesome mama. And then depending on how it goes, maybe our milker as well. Oh, Hank, gotta get her pregnant. That's his job. I know it might seem crazy because he's a mini Hereford, these are full size jerseys, but if there's a will, there's a way, isn't there, Hank? Oh, Hank. You might be thinking, why in the world do you need dairy goats and dairy cows? Don't you have milk running out of your ears? We do, but it all serves a great purpose for us between goat's milk soap, drinking milk, preserving milk with either the freeze dryer or canning. You can can milk now, by the way. Um, or having it to offer to others for animal consumption. It's a great thing, especially with the goats. They Everything has lactose in it, but it's a much lower level of lactose. So lactose intolerant people, animals, 
are able to ingest goat's milk. Um, but a lot of people prefer the cow's milk because that cream level, because you can make butter, which we do, have buttermilk, cream, all that good stuff, ice cream, cheeses, everything. So having that abundance of milk allows you to do a lot, wide variety of things that you can sell, preserve, or eat. And then now for Daisy Doo Doo. Hi Daisy, how are you? You getting good girl this morning? Be good girl? Daisy was a rescue. We like to go side by side tra trail riding. And we were at um, one, it's called Wildcat. It's one of our favorite places to go. And as we're riding, we see this dog. Somebody dropped her. And so we grabbed her, took her back to our campsite, went and told to the front desk people at the store, hey, if anybody comes in they're missing a dog, we found it on the trail, we'll have her at the campsite, let us know, here's our number. Well, we had her the entire weekend, we kept checking with the front desk, nobody said anything, so she was just dropped. And that's really sad, because we have a soft spot for dogs, we brought her home. Now, we don't know what she is, she definitely looks like she has some dash hound, beagle, mutt in her, um, but she is an awesome dog. We really love her, she's great, she's just our pet and our fun, um, but she's also a pretty good protector. Because we rescued her, I don't know if, if that has anything to do with it or not. Um, however, she seems very protective over us and the kids, and that's awesome. That's a good thing to have in a dog, uh, just in case any unwanted visitors came. And I think we've gotten them all, besides one more. And you all hear him often. Hi, Westy. Hi, Westy. What are you doing, Westy? What are you doing, Westy? What are you doing? Hi, big guy. Come here. Oh, hi. Say hi to everyone. Yeah. Yep, Rusty's that loud barking dog that's always in the back of our videos. But Rusty surprisingly has a job now. He protects the garden. He's the only dog that we have that doesn't dig profusely in anything he can dig in. So he doesn't bother any of our plants whatsoever. But he's great at keeping the rabbits, the squirrels, all those little bitty animals that like to come in and eat all over your plants. He's great at keeping them out of our garden beautiful thing to have however we got rusty off a emotional purchase he's the only dog we've ever actually paid for too which is a fun fact uh i had a dog named sadie well we all had a dog named sadie but she became a little bit attached to me and i came a little bit more attached to her well sadie passed away too soon too early and it was really really hard on us all um, i was having a lot of grief and i wanted another dog i was trying to fill that void well i did it a little too soon we went to the Humane Society and was like, you know what, we're gonna rescue another dog. Um, we've never actually bought like a full bred dog or anything. We always, any of our animals have been rescues in some form or fashion. Well, he was at the Humane Society. I think they drugged him or something because he was the calmest, coolest dog I've ever seen in my life. And I was like, you know what, I want that dog. I'm feeling a connection. Well, he came off whatever they had him on and he turned nuts. He likes to bark at everything. He loves biting water, he loves biting fire. He loves just biting snow in the air, rain that falls down. He's crazy, he's absolutely crazy, but he's a really goofy, funny dog that we love very much. And now that he has a purpose, it's been really great. So that's it, y'all. That's all of our animals, that's all of their purposes, and that's why we have all of them on our farm. Everybody, like I said, has a purpose. There's only a couple that are just for full joy. All the rest have some former job on this farm. If we get a bad egg that comes around, T-bone, they leave our farm. It is nothing but a headache and hard time on you if you keep a bad bloodline on your farm. I know that you might not believe that and that might feel silly, but if you have a bad bloodline, one that acts out, doesn't trust fences or doesn't respect fences, always picking, always doing something like that, so will the kids or the offspring of that animal. So it is a good purpose to either sell it, eat it, or move on in some form or fashion from that animal. Um, once you are able to accept that, you can have a very well-oiled machine farm. All of our animals get along. If they don't, they get out of Stiver's homestead. And that's plain and simple. So I told y'all there was gonna be a test. Let me know down in the comments if you remember which chicken I said was my favorite. And lastly, out of all of our animals here, which is your favorite? Cause I know y'all watch a lot and you see a lot of our animals and you connect with them a lot. What's your favorite one? And which type of animal would you like to hear more about? A little bit more detailed video on um, that we can deep dive some of the stuff that we specifically do and show you some of the stuff that we use with whatever we get from that animal. 
put that down below. We want to, we want you to learn, we want you to know more about them, and we want you to create a farm similar to ours because we feel like it's the best way to do it. But ultimately, your farm is going to turn into whatever works for you. So keep that in mind. Don't try to 100% replicate somebody's somebody else's homestead because it's not going to happen. You got to figure out works what works best for you. But other than that, y'all, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed meeting all of our animals that we have. And if you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button for me. We love y'all. Until the next one. Bye.